Hello YouTube, my name is John Hammond. This is more Pico CTF 2017 level 2. Normally I would be moving on to the next challenge in the web category with the Toaster Wars challenges. However, they are currently down at the moment and I've asked them a lot to fix it <laughs> and I don't really want to ask again. So we'll, we'll stand by on that. So let's move into the binary exploitation category. Uh, shells is the first one with the Z at the end. However, actually exploring this challenge in the next, I have this significant hunch that shells with an S and 70 points is actually the first challenge that's supposed to come before this one. So I'm going to do that to showcase it to you. Challenge is, how much can a couple bytes do? Use shells, given a binary and a source, and there's the remote access uh, netcat connection. Hints here are, read about basic shell code. You don't need a full shell yet, just enough to get the flag. Okay, so let's go ahead and download these files. I will W get them in a folder that I have already created for it, get the binary and get the source code, etc. So we can see what we're working with. Let's check out the source code. It is written in C. We have some headers that we're including, defining an amount of stuff to, I guess, do something with. We'll see. And there's a function called win that we'll just call the system command cat out flag dot text. Okay, so that must be what we really want to uh, execute. Let's check out this function vuln that does something with uh, memory mapping that is allowed to execute protections of execute, blah, blah, blah. Admittedly, I should learn more about memory mapping and stuff like that. I am, Again, I'm not that good at this kind of stuff, but it will eventually ask for, okay, give me 10 bytes, the amount of stuff to find up top. It will read in that amount. It'll determine if or not actually anything was returned. And it looks like it will go ahead and try and execute the stuff that it is returned. So, or, or, or read in. So it looks like it is able to just execute code. And again, with that, memory map that is executable. So this is a peculiar thing that we sometimes see in CTF challenges and we'll see in binary exploitation vulnerability challenges, stuff like that, uh, where the stack or the amount of memory that this, these things are, are, are stored is executable. Um, you'll see techniques called DEP or data execution prevention and NX um, that will try and mitigate that. However, in this binary, NX is off, we can assume, obviously, because this, this memory map is allocated with executable permissions on it. So it says, okay, my mother told me to never accept things from strangers. How bad could be running a couple bytes? Uh, then it will run that vuln function. So we want to figure out how we can run this win system and the challenge is hinting at shellcode. So if you haven't seen a shellcode before, it's amazing and bewildering. It says in hacking, shellcode is a piece of code used as the payload in the exploitation of software vulnerability. It's called shellcode because it typically starts a command line shell, which the attacker can control a compromised machine, but it can do just about anything, whatever machine code that you write, etc. Because shellcode is written in machine code. So that is assembly and instructions and opcodes and everything that we saw in the previous reverse engineering challenges, now we'll put to use in actually exploiting a binary or like hacking a program. So we can go ahead and like find shellcode on the internet. Um, really good location that I've found is Shellstorm, and I'll reference that in the next video where we can just get a ton of cool shellcode. But Pwn Tools will actually let us try and develop our own um, shellcode. I want to showcase the documentation on that because it will give us an assembly platform where we can go ahead and craft our own shellcode, uh, ideally called Shellcraft. So that's pretty neat. Um, will it give me documentation? Yes, great. If you don't have Bone Tools, sudo apt or sudo pip install, it's fantastic. Um, Shellcraft is down here at the bottom. I hope to do a series on Shellcraft sometime soon, but it essentially breaks down submodules based off architecture. In this case, if you want to check the binary, we can see what we're working with. It is just an Intel uh, 386 and uh, running on Linux. So we can reach that if we want to, and we can have it do specific things like cat a file or try those other connections, etc., etc., etc. And we can do that all just fine, and we can all build it with an assembly function that will just, as a nice utility in Pwn Tools, go ahead and give us the assembly for that thing. It will assemble whatever code we write in assembly into real opcodes. So if we wanted to do something simple like call a function, in that case win, that we saw in the source code, that's really what we want right now before we jump into trying to cat stuff and open up pop new shells. We can just piece together some assembly code and run it. So let's try that. Let's, I'm going to go ahead and create a new shell up here. I'll use Python. 
And on the other side, I want to check out the symbols in this binary. So I'm going to use read elf tack s to disable to showcase the symbols. And we can see we have some information where when the function that we want here is stored local to the binary at this hexadecimal address, 08048540. So I could copy that if I wanted to. And then in Python, let's import the pwn module. And then let's write what we will essentially have our own assembly that we're trying to do. Let's push that memory address onto the stack and then let's return so that we will just go to that location or call that function essentially. We'll just pop over there and move to this location, essentially calling the win function. Let's go ahead and compile that, not, not compile it, but put it in assembly opcodes and you can see that Pwn Tools will give it to us just like that. So if we wanted to, we could go ahead and print this out in Python, print that string, and I use Python to print it out so it can properly handle those raw bytes. You can see them on the terminal that I wouldn't be able to print those characters otherwise. So once we have that on standard output, we can go ahead and pass that to our shells binary. We'll just pipe in that input, because if, if you remember reading the source code, that shells program will just want to run bytes. But it, it can't actually run those things if you didn't give it anything. It just, it's just waiting for input. So let's go ahead and get that stuff, that assembly that we just compiled, those opcodes, that machine code, that shell code, put it on standard output, pipe it in, and once we pass it the program, you can see it's trying to run that system command, just as the win function explained, bin cat, flag.txt, no such file or directory. Hmm, okay. Looks like we've got it doing what we want it to do on our local thing. We just don't have a file flag.txt that we could actually have it display. If we fake something, it totally could do that for us. Whatever. But let's go ahead and pass it to the real thing. Let's go ahead and take it with that remote netcat command. Running the program just remotely. Let's go ahead and pump that to our input. And we get the flag, just like that. So that is what we're working with here. We can, if we wanted to, tail that, get just the flag, write a simple get flag script for that. Just throw it in a little binary or a bash script. That doesn't explain the whole process we went through of read elf and generating that shell code with pwn tools. So we could write a, a pwn tool script to connect to it and generate that shell code on the fly if we particularly wanted to, but I don't want to get that far into it right now. However, I hope that was a good overview of our potential for shellcode and just showing how we can do what we want in assembly and bring that to opcodes by using the Pwn Tools library. So that is an awesome toolkit. And we'll get into doing other cool things in that next challenge that... Do I have the flag actually in my front? No, let's go ahead and submit it. In that other challenge that... I think really does come after this one for some reason, though the point value is different, where we aren't able to use that win function, we've just got to do something else like cat the flag, etc, etc. Quick shout out to the people that support me on Patreon. Thank you guys so much. $1 or more on Patreon will give you a special shout out just like this at the end of every video. $5 or more on Patreon will give you early access to everything released on YouTube. If you did like this video, please do like, comment, and subscribe. Join our Discord server, link in the description. It's a cool community of CTF players, programmers, and hackers if you can hang out with me and other cool people. And I would love to see you guys on Patreon and in the next video. See ya.